So my name is Kelly, K-E-L-L-I-E. Foreman, like the boxer. I, and I, in my I system, live- You're in my system as first name Sugar, last name Baker, just that <laughs> way. That's okay. Um, and uh, I live in central Montana, but I'm not from you, here. I've lived here. I've lived here for three years and it's a fucking nightmare. Why? Because it's nothing doing you and the cows? No, um, very homophobic, very um, antithesis of anything uh, normal. Well, let's talk about my political experience, okay? So um, in the 90s, I I helped found an organization called Equality Utah that still exists. I'm no longer a part of it, okay? And um, I worked very hard with the LGBT community of Utah because they were passing laws saying that gay people couldn't foster children. And so I worked with the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. I was their state representative in Utah for the NGLTF. So I uh, would meet with uh, Irvis Shevade, Carrie LaBelle, Matt Foreman, who happens to be my cousin over periods of time. And we organized to help bring an end to uh, that um, foster care problem and adoption problem in Utah. And we organized with a woman named Diana Hardy Garcia, who was from Texas and now lives in California. You can look her up. She was incredible. But I uh, did, a, we did a lot of work. Uh, my group, we sponsored human rights campaign people in our homes during the elections. They would come and help uh, blue dog Democrats. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, come and um, promote their, um, their campaigns to get more gay positive people or gay friendly people in our government. And you know what, the long-term thing worked. I mean, we got, uh, we got a state representative who was lesbian, her name, I don't care for her as a person, but her name is Jackie Biscuffsby. She ended up becoming the mayor of Salt Lake City, Um, Derek Kitchen. um, It just really blossomed into a female, gay and lesbian uh, political system in downtown Salt Lake City. And Salt Lake City is like, uber liberal at to this day because of the hard work we put in and um i and i took spent i mean i traveled all over the united states with conferences with these people the southern poverty law center and we took uh classes on spending media and how to look for fake news that kind of thing early in the day right so i've been doing this on multiple levels and what brought Since you Since I was probably 21 and I'm 52. When, when what, what did you, are you from Utah? No, I was born in uh, Dallas. Okay. We moved to Utah in 1979. Right. And we, my, uh, my stepdad, my father was murdered when I was five. My mom remarried a man who was a NSA guy who worked at NASA for IBM. Right. I had astronauts and shit in my house as a kid. <laughs> I, I grew up uh, pretty rich. Um, I didn't recognize that though and well, until I was an adult. Yeah, were they in the oil business? Um, well, Dick did work for large energy companies. He actually passed away in California a couple of years ago, and he was a big executive for Arco Oil. Right. When he passed away, but he was the kind of guy that. I could be on a road trip in I-80 and a federal plated vehicle is zooming my car and I could call him and say, what's going on? Why am I being, you know, zoomed around? And he would say, oh, a shipment of nuclear waste is coming through Cheyenne today. I mean, he knew that stuff, you know? So I grew up with uh, computers in my home. I mean, like we had a computer in my home in 1980 connected to the internet. Wow. God. Yeah. Yeah. In a big air conditioner in there because it just and with tiled floors because it was just so hot, right? Mm-hmm. Those old old IBM ones like that, you know. So but I, yeah, um, I've been very now? politically involved my whole life, and I would say the triggering event was watching uh, the Iranian hostage crisis in 1979. It even led me to learn to speak Persian, and I've lived in China and I speak Chinese. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow. Oh, all right. Well. Oh, figure that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Know. Who would have thunk? The reason why I want to talk to you is okay. So, 
Um, so I'm putting together, which I might have implied in my two second text. I'm doing these little short interviews with people that I want to have part of this political TikTok. Sure. Art. All right. And, and I, what the media or the soundbite is, isn't important. Right. I feel like you, were, you weren't around leading up to the Biden election, I don't think. Not, not, I was on Zoom. Presence, yeah. No, you're I was on TikTok. More, you're becoming more like conscious and, you know, you're, 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 you're clearly making more effort now and it's obvious, right? Yeah, I found how to put my toehold in the platform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a list of people. I've had my first meeting with Run for Something which is a great organization where they get behind, like the whole goal is like, not only do we need to keep the house and the Senate blue, which we, duh. Oh but, yeah. Um, but more than anything else, we should be part of, because we have such a diverse and wide range of people and followers, that we should be very much supporting these down ballot races with young, you know, urban or, diverse or women or gay or transgender people getting into Democrats, getting into the political process. Yes. Uh -huh. And I feel like we have a lot of time between now and 22, but we have no time. You know what I mean? It'll be exactly right. But I, so what I'm doing first is I'm putting together a list of like, whatever people that I know that I kind of connect with on this list of here's who Here's who we are to go to run for something. Because if we work with them, that's going to be good visibility for us. As they know, they don't have any relationship with TikTok. They have a couple of people in the staff that kind of do it. But I called them and I said, "Look, I saw the woman. She was on Rachel Maddow, and I direct messaged her on Instagram. And I said, "Look, I got a slew of political TikTokers. We are chimed and ready to go and get organized. We don't want to be the leaders of it. We want to be." The car the to the wheel. We want to be the army that helps. So if there's a, if you have somebody running in like South Carolina, that's like a black guy for the first time up against some fucking red piece of shit, then we would do whatever we need to do in message. We would work with them with messaging because I know messaging for them is very important. But I said, the thing is, we're really good. The thing about the Democratic Party, we suck at messaging, as you know, that text. That oh, yeah. So I said, you would want to work with us because we're able to succinctly get our message out. We all have all these different personalities that would be able to communicate <clears throat> specifically for all these different people. So we're like a wealth of information. We're a wealth of passion and we're a wealth of well intention. So I have to make sure yeah. that this group is represented. I mean, I have somebody that's graduating high school, someone that's in law school. I have three people that are of color, Spanish. I'm, I'm, I'm just now building that. I'm Gen X. Well, that's fine. I'm a yeah. boomer, so leave me alone. So <laughs> the bottom line is I'm, I want to help pull this army together. If you know of any from your followers, like younger skewed people that you think would want to do stuff, again, it's not like you're going to have to do five hours of bank phone banking a night. Those people will always just appear on those people on the ground. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just want to be part of their messaging. And if we find somebody they're really behind, then, you know, go to it, knock yourself out. Like I, I found my way to Amy McGrath and I volunteered for her this year, which is a fucking waste of time. <laughs> I, think Mitch, I think Mitch's uh, uh, election was uh, fraudulent. Yeah. But we can't prove 100%. it. We will never know. Same thing with fucking Lady Graham. Yeah. There's no way she won. Did you see the video I did of him? Remember when he got out there and he said, uh, young lady, you too. Remember that? No. He was like, young lady, you too have a place in the Republican Party. And I, uh, I, I'll, I'll tag you in the video. Yeah. But I imitated him while putting on a hijab. <laughs> she's a mess girl she's just right a mess right so what do you think you think we're gonna be able to kind of cohesively put this thing together 
I do. And I've actually had people on my Twitter page ask me to do specific things. And they and some of them are things you already did. So I told them I didn't want to repeat it. Like what? Do you know, well, I, I can't remember. It's been a few weeks ago. It was, I, I can't remember exactly. Somebody said, can you redo this? And the person's in Texas and I downloaded your video and sent it to him. I oh, okay. said he's covered it. Right. I just didn't want to recreate the wheel. I'd right. rather support. So when we start organizing, I could see us like with your Google Doc, whatever you're talking about, us looking at the list and disseminating it between us to yeah. deliver the same message in different ways. Right. Oh, definitely with our own personalities. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. So um, like if you could think of any other people that make sense based on the fact that we want to be broad culturally, age wise, you know, bring them on. I mean, yeah. a lot of my followers, I think, are in my age category. <laughs> I don't think I'm attracting the young ones, but whatever. I don't care. They're, I, I mean, attract. I did, a, well, I did a call out to that thing, like that poster. I said, "Sign up, sign up, sign up." I have like a thousand people I've entered into a database. It's like awesome. That's nice. Yeah. The large amount of my followers are African American. Perfect. Right. Yeah. I don't know why. And that's okay. I'm okay. I'm not saying anything about it. I'm actually, uh, I actually am a descendant from an enslaved couple in Westchester, in Winchester, West Virginia. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, they're one of my great, 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 great grandparents. But my point is, is apparently my type and style in the way I deliver a, a political message appeals to that demo, appeals to that broad demographic. Right, right. Okay. So I can uh, start keeping an eye out for those okay. people. I mean, we have a nice amount of time to kind of formulate. Look, again, a lot of the candidates that are going to be running, you know, might fall between the cracks or they just have some kind of, you know, something weird happens that they become, they have to get out of the race. So I don't want to spin our wheels. I want to be really strategic. And the ultimate goal is that be six months before the election, with hopefully everybody gets their vaccine shot we can all get together somewhere in like vegas or something oh and my god i would love that i so that's the bigger in... that's the bigger plan of getting it organized you'll be a value cog a cog in the wheel along with those other cogs well i'm here for it so thank you okay great have a great day you too abe bye-bye